Okay, today I'm gonna to answer all the questions that you guys sent in regarding the handstand push-ups. So handstand push-up, I'm gonna take it that most of you are working towards this. So freestand inversion, so from a straight handstand, coming down, kissing the head to the floor, and then coming back up to straight position for either repetitions or to move to more advanced movements, like 90 degree handstand push-ups, dead presses and things like that. Now I'm first gonna run through the questions and then I'm gonna go through the videos that were sent in. So I'll go through some video critiques at the end. So first question, where do you feel the weight in your palms shift as you go through the range of motion? Now when we do any overhead pressing or any pressing in general, so whether that's bench press, push-ups, handstand push-ups, uh, we wanna get more external rotation. So I wanna be pushing and trying, like if you're using a barbell, you would try and break the bar. So you're like screwing into the floor with the hands. Same as we do in a squat, we don't go into internal rotation. We wanna try and go into external rotation. So where do I feel the weight in the palms? Okay, so when I first go into the handstand push-up, I just try and find balance, which is pretty normal. So mainly palm with a little bit of fingertips, especially if I overbalance slightly. And then from there, I start to take the feet back, shoulders forwards, a little bit more goes back into the heel of the palm now. So it's definitely pushing more through the heel of the palm as I come down, more way there. And then when I push back up, outside heel of the palm. And then back to the balance again, use a little bit more fingertips at the top. So it's very similar to your squat position. So I'm externally rotating, screwing the palms into the floor. So here, see if I go to my squat, I push from that, especially that bottom position when I want to try and get back out, I push the heels into the floor. It's exactly the same in the handstand push-up, but I'm pushing in externally rotating, and I'm pushing in with the heel of the palm. So way more weight there on the push back up. And then when I get to the top, it goes back into the fingers, but still mainly in the palm, but use the fingers when I need to from a balance point of view. Okay, second question. When I'm doing more advanced pike push-up or holding in the bottom of the movement, I get pain in the infraspinatus, teres major, teres minor area, I suppose that means, and the area of my shoulder blade. Is this a weakness or tightness in that area? If so, what exercises can I do to help? Thanks. So same thing, when we go into our movements, we wanna have external rotation, so that normally puts the shoulder and the scapula into a better position, into a stronger position. When we have internal rotation, we don't wanna be pushing like this. We wanna have an open chest, create more space. Elbows in, chest open. And as we get to the hardest part of the movement, which is normally the bottom of the movement when we push back up again, that's where the internal rotation will try and creep in or will run out of space. So just having healthy scapula, so doing things like hanging, active passive hangs, scapula push-ups, and also not training at your one rep max will allow you to stay in a healthier, better position for the scapula. So most people with the body weight strength stuff, they're working at their one rep, two rep max all the time, which means that your technique and your positions are gonna not be the best. It's like maxing out your squat. So if I come down to the bottom of my squat position and then I've got a real heavy barbell, then my knees will go in and I'll go into this internal rotation and things will not be happy. So same, same in the handstand push-up. If we go into an internal rotation and end up like this, we're gonna get pain in the traps in the shoulder blades or something like that. So I would be working at higher ranges, I'd be doing the scapular push-ups, push the hanging, and things like that. Okay, next one, is it true you have to be able to military press your entire body weight to do a full range of motion handstand push-up? Now I recently tested this, so I can bang out 10 reps plus of handstand push-ups, head to floor, three or four reps, deficit collarbone to the box and back up again. I weigh 80 kilos and when I tested this the other day, I got to 72 kilos strict press for one rep and I done a one rep push press at 80 kilos. So no, you don't have to be out of military press or overhead strict press your body weight, but obviously if you can get closer to that, it's gonna help. So I don't do any overhead barbell pressing now and I haven't done for the last seven or eight years when I moved over to the body weight strength training only. But previous to that, I was doing lots of overhead pressing, whether it was dumbbells or barbells. So next question, I have to train towards the chest to wall handstand push-up and been on the wall for six plus months. I see barely any progress. I keep my schedule at two times a week with my same amount of exercises. Partial chest to wall handstand push-up two sets, negative chest to wall handstand push-up two sets. Am I making any mistakes? Is the volume too little or should intensity be increased? Any advice will be appreciated. 
So when working towards a freestanding handstand push-up, I would be doing negatives of some sort, so full range, so going down to collarbone to box. Ideally freestanding, but if you don't have the control freestanding, I would be doing it on the wall. Then I would be doing full range of motion. So that might be dropping back to something like pike push-ups, so something like this. So where you're training the full range of motion, you could do this elevated if this is easy as well, I'm gonna pass that. So something like that, so you're getting full range of motion, or on the wall if you can do it, you can slide up and down. And around the five to eight rep region. So something like a normal strength program, like a five by five, most people when they do the handstand push-up work, they start dropping the reps way too low. Then I would be doing negatives, so either ideally freestanding, if not up against the wall, coming all the way down to collarbone touches the box, working around the 30 seconds time under tension. So if you do one rep that's 15 seconds, you need to do two reps to equal the 30 seconds, and don't take that above four. If it, and if it goes above four repetitions, the, the progression you're using is too hard for you. Then I would be doing some partial range freestanding handstand push-ups. So that's where we have a target and we just touch the target. So ideally it would be something you change the height of, make a triangle with the target. So trying to come down, touch your head to it, and then come back up again. And again, aiming for reps ideally. But that's gonna help with your balance of the handstand push-up. So trying to find your perfect, efficient line as you come up and down and hold balance. So to summarize, I'll be doing higher repetitions, five to eight repetitions of full range of motion. I would be doing 30 seconds of work with your negative, so your eccentric, whether that's toes against the wall or freestanding. And then I'd be doing like two to three reps of your partial range, but you are gonna fall a bit with that one and that's fine because you've done your volume in your strength part. Okay, how important is the straight form at the beginning? I wouldn't overly worry about your body being in a dead straight line, but I would pay a lot of attention to your body being one segment. So as you come up and down, normally people will start to struggle with the line on the way down and their body will buckle or collapse a little bit. And then when they try and push back up, their body keeps collapsing through that weak point. So ideally in the handstand push up, if you watch my body line, it would be dead straight. So there, one segment, so my shoulder talks to my feet. So I have this connection, and then as I come down, it stays as one segment, and then when I come back up, same thing, the shoulders and the feet constantly talk to each other. That would be the ideal. In reality, most people can't hold that balance, and their body's gonna move around a little bit, but what we wanna try and avoid is the body collapsing. So if I collapse on the way down, and my body goes like this, because we want to try and get our chest face on the floor. Now when I push up, my body's going to try and collapse even more, and it's going to be hard to coordinate and get the push to go straight up through the body. Instead, the body's going to be collapsing all around you, and you're going to have to put so much energy in trying to control all the moving body parts that you're not going to have enough energy to push yourself back up again. So no, it doesn't have to be a dead straight line, but it does have to try and be one segment. So the feet talk to the shoulders. So I could do like a straddle or even something, get the point across, I could do something like this, like a stag position, and I can do a handstand push up there, you can see how the body still stays as one piece, and it's not turning into a floppy mess. Okay, how to get from doing one rep freestand into more, I am kind of stuck with it. There is a video critique coming up very similar to this question, but I'll go for it briefly now. So basically it probably means that you're not resetting back into your position when you start your second rep. So you won't be fully balanced or in the ideal setup. So the start of the second rep is in like a faulty position. So that's really common. And it probably just means that you're using way too much energy on the first repetition. So really working on the balance and the real slow eccentrics can help with that because you're trying to really fine tune the balance point as you go down. As Soon as you're out of balance, you have to put more energy into holding the balance so less strength is available to push yourself back up again. So what I'd be working on is like one and a half reps. So I would do a good repetition. So as best as you can, making sure, so video yourself so you can see what's happening. So try and make the first rep really nice. Then, before you go into your second one, get yourself back together again. Make sure you go for your normal technique and then just do your slow, controlled eccentric. Pause, come back out. So do one and a half reps. Then you could do one and three quarters where you push up a little bit, but try and hold that good position. And check and compare the pathways on the second rep compared to the first rep. 
Was the cue to hold protraction and not lose it all the way from the initial lean till midpoint and back up. It feels like I'm holding protraction, but when videoing myself, my shoulder blades look like they are retracting. So that's going back to that external rotation again, and also making sure that you get that movement where the shoulders come forwards first and not just going straight down. So if I'm here, if I've got a overhead position, what I don't want to do is start coming down like this because I'm going to go into a bad position. I want to bring the shoulders, so if I've got a barbell, you bring the bar in front. With the handstand push-up though, because you can't move the floor, you bring the shoulder out, which helps keep you in that protracted position. And then your feet need to go in the opposite direction. So if I don't move the feet, that's gonna take me out of position, or if I don't take the shoulders forwards, that's gonna take me out of position. So practicing this will really help instead of this. So I want to go into that position and then come down, as opposed to that position and coming down. So your body's going to try and collapse on itself that way. And it really does help to go a little bit more external rotation. So turn the index fingers out, bring the elbows in a little bit. How to develop a deep handstand push-up. So if you have a strong head to floor handstand push-up, it's pretty simple. You can just start increasing the height of your hands slowly. So you start to increase the deficit with the full reps and then also doing eccentric reps that are much deeper. So the eccentric reps will allow you to go all the way down as far as you can to that shoulder stand position. So eccentrics coming down, go beyond where you would normally go in your full rep. Go as deep as you can, hold. Little push back up if you can, come back out. And then with your full range reps where you're going up and down, just slowly increase the height of the hand. And if you don't have it, I would definitely be practicing your shoulder stand position. So shoulder stand just means something like this. So whatever your target depth is, what you want to work towards, make sure you can hold comfortably this position and feel balanced there. You can even do like some pulses just to get really comfortable in that position because that's the position where you're going to need to change direction. So you want to be really happy there. Okay, I've answered all the questions now, so now I'm gonna go into a couple of video critiques that we have. Okay, so let's have a look at this position. So first of all, we can look at our starting position. So what is the freestanding handstand like? So freestanding handstand is pretty good. So what we wanna see is when we go through the handstand push-up, that the shoulder to ankle stays connected like it is now. So see how it's one piece, shoulder to ankle. So if we just watch that to start with, and we just see what happens as we go down into the movement, so, so that's pretty good. See how now we still have this relationship between the ankle and the shoulder. The shoulders have come forwards. We're looking down towards the floor, which is really good. Okay, now there's a little bit here. See when we push back up, if you can see that, see how the legs are piking a little bit and opening. So that, and that straight away is gonna make the handstand push up a little bit harder. So the, the torso staying still as he goes down, but the hips, are uh, open and closing very slightly. So if you run it just there, so it doesn't look like much, but what that does, that movement there where we flick the legs up, that's gonna put a slight bend in the low back. And then when you push back up, the torso is gonna wanna stay in this position. The legs are gonna wanna try and come straight up. So that's where you have this like banana-like position and you get lots of energy stuck in the low back when you push back up. It's quite subtle here. He's actually really good. It's only very subtle, but that would make, make the difference between getting one or two reps and make that harder to go back up. So then, when you, then if you look, when we go back up to the top, you'll see we don't have that connection now. See how the legs are nearly straight? So the legs are straight, but the torso is still at this angle and the shoulders are still closed. So ideally what we wanna work on is having that connection between the shoulder and the feet. So when you come back up, we don't have this slight buckle in the body. Most people buckle way more than this. So he's doing really good, but that will be the difference for him of getting multiple reps instead of one rep. Uh, the other way of doing it is to drive the feet over here a little bit more. And that's what you'll see a lot of people compensate. So you have a true banana because this is actually harder to hold now because the shoulder of the legs and the torso are nearly underbalanced. So they're nearly this side of the handstand. So over here too far, which is going to make that hard to catch the top of the handstand then and go into the second rep. Okay, so we've got someone that can do free repetition. So they start in like a crow position, go into like headstand 
push out of that. So do a rep to start with. And then one, two, three reps, or two and a half reps. So this is really good. He's using a lot of strength and there's quite a bit of movement. So a lot of disconnect between the ankle and the shoulder. So he is, will be maxing out on every repetition, trying to hold the balance as he does it. So again, ideally the body should stay as one segment. Um, and there, what he's done is sent a video of his, so this is when he first got one rep uh, before he worked up to the three reps. Now what you'll notice is this one is much slower. So he holds in that bottom position, pauses, locks everything in, pushes up, good connection between the shoulder and the feet. But he's basically going from a dead press up. So he's not moving before he started the movement. It's much easier to go from top down and use that like stretch reflex and go straight back up again and not, not stop moving. So if we compare the two videos, the main difference is the speed. So how he goes into these ones, he gets through like three repetitions. In the same time, it takes him to do one repetition here. So in terms of work, time under tension, this one rep is nearly as hard, if not harder, than the three repetitions when he's moving up and down. So he's actually using two different training methods. One, he's moving fast for more repetitions, the other one, he's moving slow and only getting one repetition, but the time under tension is the same. So it's actually a good way of training to do both of these things, to move fast for multiple reps of handstand push-ups, and to move super slow, whether that's an eccentric or full range of motion. And if you can do the full range of motion, you can do bottom up, similar to what that guy was doing, he went from crow, you could go from headstand. So this would be really challenging, but it really focuses on the, uh, the full on strength and only finding the balance on the way up. So you're in your headstand position, you lift up, so head's just off the floor, and then we push up nice and slow, showing control and balance throughout the movement, and then try to find a clean headstand at the top. So there's some benefit in doing that. Now there's a lot of prerequisite there that you have very good positioning because you need a lot of strength. So you don't wanna be using up much strength on your balance. So my recommendation would be to go back and look at your training you've been doing recently and see what time under tension your reps are because you're using very different techniques between these two videos. But if you really wanna get strong with the movement as well and make it adaptable, you wanna be doing both of those. You wanna be doing deficit, so raising the hands up, going to collarbone to a box. And with your strength, I'd definitely be going towards like eccentric 90 degree handstand push-ups and things like that. So that's all the questions answered today. Hopefully that's given you a bit of an insight into the handstand push-ups and how to train it. Let me know down in the comments if you have any feedback or further questions to what I've said or anything slightly different regarding to the handstand push-ups. My next Q&A is gonna be on training towards the one-arm handstand. So I'll do the same thing. I'll put the community post up again. So start filling out the questions on there. Send in any video critiques, that'll be awesome. So just DM me on Instagram or just send me the link to your YouTube. So that'll be for anyone wanting to work towards the one-arm handstand or already have a one-arm handstand and just want to fine-tune the one they have. Normal deal, thumbs up and subscribe would be appreciated. And I'll speak to you next time. Thanks, guys.